send it to our personal page or whatever the case is, or you can email us too at moxymedia2016 at gmail.com. Send me all of your information, points, you know, who's won, where at, <clears throat> all that type of stuff, just to make it easier. Uh, I mean, kind of make it easier for me, but. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, you know, yeah, absolutely. Hit them up on our, you know, our Moxie Media page on Facebook, send them to the email, give them a call, whatever you got to do, get the information to Josh so he can help out with the sponsors and make sure all the information is correct for that big race at Sunset coming up. Josh, mid-season championship for Lambeth Speedway. Let's get after this, dude. I'm going to tell, right tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now, you would have thought it was championship night. I'm not kidding. I mean, these guys brought out the heavy artillery, and it was go time from the first green flag. I heard, I heard it was intense. <clears throat> it really was. I mean, it was like top to bottom. I mean, the, the Hornet class, okay, we haven't had a lot of cars. And, you know, you guys call them 4Bs. We call them Hornets, the four-cylinder cars. <clears throat> we haven't had a large car count. Now, that being said, coming in to Saturday night, we've got the big $500 Great American Hornet Challenge coming to Willamette Speedway. There we go. And it's going to sound, you know, I mean, we're going to have every Hornet and up and down the <laughs> Northwest region. Are you, are you sure you need, a, like, a, like a noise order in steel? I'm going to wear earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> what's, what's her name that sits by you or whatever your score? Debbie. <laughs> Debbie, I love her so much because she, <laughs> the very first time I walked up there in the tower, I asked her, and I looked at her, I'm like, why is she wearing, why is she near your place? You asked her. So I asked her, and she goes, because I hate announcer. <laughs> I hate listening to you guys talk. <laughs> like, but you know what? There, there is a person there that, I mean, you talk about. She's so awesome, dude. Very, very cool. She's but so when cool. it comes to uh, having a, a job at a racetrack, especially a track, you know, a dirt track as fast as the Lambert Speedway, to have somebody score. The way that one she person. does, yeah. That's one, like that's like Wendy up there. Yeah, they, just, they get focused. I and, really believe that is probably the most undervalued job at the racetrack to keep right? everything consistent. I mean, you talk about somebody that that uh, deserves to uh, talk about somebody that deserves an to achievement a, award. Yeah, and to make a little more money. I don't care where you're at. I mean, those they're underpaid. I don't care what they're paid. They're underpaid. I mean, they, they they're phenomenal at what they do. Right. Um, she, you first meet Debbie, and it's kind of like. Sure about her. You know, she comes across a little abrasive, but you, know, you get to know her. Too. She's about as cool as they get, man. I, I, I enjoy sitting up next to her and the conversation, the banter back and forth. She does. <laughs> it was she has fun. Yeah, I sat there and, and it was the second time I got there and, and she was like, All right, you're here again. Like, what are you doing here? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's but awesome. You know what? She she is. She's she's about as fun as they get to work with and um, yeah, very, very tough job. And she's gonna have a tough job this Saturday with that Hornet challenge, but Talking about Hornets, um, you know, we had six in, six in the house uh, for the midseason championship. And when we talk about championship points at Willamette Speedway when it comes to the Hornet division, we're talking about two drivers. And I, I'm not kidding you. It's going to be between these two drivers, each of them, four feature wins. Okay. We've had eight starts. Hey. You know, I mean, <laughs> they've got four feature wins. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Tracy Muse, fast qualifier. He always. Yeah. He's always he's the always M16. Like, he's like he's like a Cody Jones or anything like that. I mean he's, he's like a Maverick. I mean he's like who we talk about all the time. Right, fast qualifier by three tenths of a second over Joe Lavorn. Okay. Oh my now, god. Uh, we're gonna. We're, I mean we've got uh, a couple of rookies now. Here I'll tell you somebody. Two drivers that, that are young, that are making strides in this division, that were actually pretty impressive this last Saturday was Devin Traslavinia, who is the son-in-law to Tracy Muse. And Michaela Campbell in a little um, gray primer number eight M. <laughs> I mean, she. That's like Taylor Sayers' car, twenty six car. It's all primer and gray. Right, <laughs> but it takes a little bit of time to get used to what's going on. Get back, she doesn't have a whole lot of experience in the race car, but she made big, big strides th this last week and, and and bucked up. I mean, she came to race and she really? was there, and then she was. Uh, yeah, there was no pushing Michaela Campbell around in the feature. She Good was, deal for her, She man. came to race, but when it came down to it, it was uh, Tracy Mews and Rolla Vaughn. We're going to talk most about them in this division. So the Trophy Dash, okay? Fast qualifier with the Tracy Mews. Bring the four fastest cars out, and they are Tracy Mews, Rolla Vaughn, Michaela Campbell, and Devin Traslavinia were the four cars in the dash, okay? Now... <laughs> <laughs> We, we talk about Tracy Mews, and we talk about a guy who, you know, had a little bit of bad luck being the season, but still picked up some wins. And um, Trophy Dash race, he dropped the hammer, and, I mean, it was like, is, did anybody else see the green? I mean, he won it by eight-tenths of a second. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I mean, eight-tenths. I mean, he checked out and was like, wow, nobody really had any form. That being said, the other three cars. That's huge at Willamette. Yeah. 
the other three cars were um, still pretty fast. You know, I mean, they, it was the Hornets. It's competitive. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here in the in the Moxie is studio, it hot but to you? dude, it's hotter than yeah. No Man. kidding. Very hot. <laughs> I, I wonder if uh, anybody's listening on the outside of the studio. If we got a fan the or, anything AC or something, there, right? <laughs> yeah. How many? So Muse dominates the trophy dash by point, point eight zero three. I mean, just just took off and left them. Now we get into the heat race, and evidently, evidently, Tracy Muse upset Ro Lavorn because she came out in the heat race and said, "I owe you one." Well, now we're gonna race. Oh, oh and, really? Uh, she says, "I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna run you and I'm gonna run you hard." And it was a good race. I mean, they were, they were there. I mean, it was just side banging. By side. Yeah, and it was a great heat race. I mean, probably the best heat race we've seen all year in the Hornets. And uh, Lavorn crosses the stripe ahead of Tracy Muse. Listen to this: point zero four five. No way. That was fast. I mean, it was just it was close. It was you know that's not a lot of time. You're talking you know dirt track racing and racing Hell period. Oh yeah. They were right there. So I, I really wanted to focus on the feature because we had fifteen lap feature. Okay. Six cars started, uh, five cars finished. Brandon Trimble in the 44 had a little trouble early in the race, uh, parked it on lap five. Flat tire, it was a flat tire is what it was. Actually, I believe he got black flag because he was trying to run. He was just way off the pace, flat right front. You know how that goes. Right. <clears throat> but the other four, five drivers on the track, they let it go. They let it go and for the 15 lap feature, <laughs> <laughs> I can see the twinkle in your eyes. Man, eye. I'm telling you, Tracy Muse got to the front, and I said, okay, this is this is going to be interesting because he got to the front, and he stretched it out. Had a pretty pretty good lead over that 40 car of Ro LaVorne. Right. Then Ro LaVorne pressed the gas pedal a little harder. <laughs> you mean and, more than a floorboard? <laughs> yeah. So, and Ro, if you know this lady, there is no fear. I mean, she just is not afraid to drive that car as hard. I mean... And, and she started hunting the racetrack. She tried the bottom, tried the middle, tried the top, tried it looking around. With that being said, every lap on the corner entry, she starts pulling them in, pulling them in, pulling them in. Really? And on, on lap 12 of 15, I told the crowd, because you can actually hear the announcer when the Hornets are on the track, <laughs> you know, especially when there's only six of them. But you know, I told the crowd, I said, race fans, I said, I want you to watch that 40 car. This is how Ro LaVorn does it. She sat back there for 15 laps in second place, hunting the racetrack, watching everything Tracy Mews is doing. She likes to make her move late in the race. Don't be surprised if you see a big challenge down you know, here on the next lap. And I'm not kidding you. Lap 13 down the back stretch into turn three, and she just she gave Tracy Muse everything. And they actually come out of turn four to the white. She side got by her, side. Got underneath him, made the pass, and, and she led the final Shut lap and a half. And yeah. But I think I Good just for her. She just sits back there and watches and watches. And actually her car was a little tight. Right. So she had to adjust her driving. She had to adjust what, how she was entering the corner because it wasn't helping her early in the race. That's how Muse got so far away. Right. Was her car was tight, and Tracy was just, I mean, smooth all the way around. Once Ro figured out how to make that driving adjustment and the entry, <laughs> she started reeling them in. And it was a good race. I mean, it really was. But they're now four, four, four wins, wins apiece. Piece. Yeah. Look I at, mean, look at that, though. See, and, the, and this is the thing, too, especially with your 4B challenge uh, that's coming down there. Uh, next week, uh, I, I believe. I mean, you, you got you got a bunch of cars coming from Southern Oregon. You guys got a bunch of all guys over. from all, all over the over. place or whatever coming out. This, <clears throat> I would love to be down there, and it, and and hopefully maybe um, Moxie will. We'll have uh, some video, some sure. video of it yeah. and everything else too. Uh, uh, get some of the guys that uh, that work for us to do something. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> I, I do, I do want to sit there and say this is that. Uh, the people behind the scenes uh, don't get a, a, a lot of credit and everything else. And I want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to my wife, Trisha, for, for doing all the videos. Um, so if you guys like the videos up there at Sunset, uh, she does this all for free. She, she's not paid by the track. She's not paid by anybody what? or whatever. But, you know, I want to give – I mean, she, she works her butt off for me in that track like you wouldn't believe. Well, I, I, I know. I know, and uh, that's the thing you do talk about, you know, that, that fans don't see what goes on behind us, okay? Right. You've got Trish at, at Sunset. Right. 
Now, you've Willamette, got Sandra. With Willamette Speedway being so big, I've got Sandy who will do anything that needs to be done to get the right information to make sure something is, you know, getting taken care of. Right. I've also got, you know, we've got Sam Pettit between the two of us, you know, doing video. We've got Adam Passmore when he shows up and he doesn't have an engagement with uh, some little dime somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that was his excuse, up, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Was and like, he, he's I can't come out. to the track because I got a girlfriend date and I'm like, <laughs> and we've got, you know, Warren. Warren's on the quad back there in the Warren's pit area cool, and yeah. just constantly I, on the radio, information, information. I want to thank him so much for coming on board, too. Oh, um, man, he's been a huge help. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it was a last-minute type deal. It um, literally, it, it really was. Yeah, I mean, he, he sat right here, you know, and I, and I met him here, you know, a month ago. And uh, it's cool to see him out there uh, enjoying what he does. He's been on a race team. Uh, a couple of race teams and stuff. I mean, Former he, chassis guy for Hirsch McGriff. Yeah, you know, he's, he's been around the game. He, he knows what's up. He knows what's going on. So when you talk, you know, when you talk race cars, he's not. Oh yeah, those things that have you know that go around and circle yeah. with the motor, the vroom vroom things. Well, and yeah. he's got a passion, a passion yeah, for the does. sport. So, um, but I, I do want to. I do. I mean, before I, I do want to take a big shout out and stuff to those guys. Uh, so if you do see them, you know, with us, you know, regardless if it's Willamette Speedway or. Or whatever, you know. Tell them thank you so much for doing the things that they do. Um, they they would really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, classics. Well, Debbie calls them classics. We call them I, street stocks. Man, I, she but she's old school. Though, she too. will not change. She, she will not. You're not gonna change her. She'll change you before you change her. I'll tell you that. Right. So street <laughs> stocks roll out, and we had 17 street stocks. We had a good. That's car awesome. Count. It was man. a good, good car, car count. count. Um, this was cool because uh, we had. I'm going to throw some names out. Now, everybody heard about Andrew Langan and his bad wreck at Willamette at the, the Sprint Car Show. Right. He absolutely destroyed that number 74 uh, Chevelle. He's been running very fast car. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. That race car is almost a, a, a piece of artwork, you know, just like an, like an old-style cup car. Just beautiful. Okay. It, it, it was very beautiful at the car show, too. <clears throat> oh, man. So, let's look at this. <laughs> uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about some of the names in this division for the midseason championship. Kyle Yak. David Kronk bought a car and came back to race. Shut Absolutely. Up. Are you see man. on his birthday no less. See that's Kronk, a... happy birthday, buddy. But yeah, he actually shows up with a car he's never been in. Okay. Is on that his birthday. late models or modifies? He goes back to his street stock. Well, he's got the kid and the and, the, and that big step, and he's like, you know what? I like those street stocks. I'm gonna buy me a street stock <laughs> and come race. And he shows up in the midseason championship with a car he's never been in. Okay. Shut up. Chris Sign, Kevin Roberts, Justin Evans, Andrew Langan drove. Kevin Williamson's car, the W7. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mikey Brakeall, Joey Cannon, Lauren Cruzy, Talon Roberts, Steve Jorgensen made his first appearance. Shannon Horn already has a feature win. Uh, Chambers, Rick Chambers, Charlie Culpepper, and we got some fast cars. Charlie Culpepper, I remember that name. Yeah, you should. Yeah. He's, he's from up your area. Hey. Right? <laughs> so listen to this. <clears throat> I, I still, I still want to, I still want to hear oh, about oh, this. You, drunk, dude. Just wait, it's <laughs> gonna, you're gonna awesome. hear about this. You're, you know, <laughs> just wait. I didn't, we, I didn't talk about this intentionally because I wanted to catch you with it. That's funny. Fast qualifier was Kyle Yak. Okay, in the rat rod that he took out of the bushes and went down right. the grove and won the wall. <laughs> you, you know, this is this is a weird thing. Is, is that if you started noticing that some of these fast, fast guys are taking the cars that haven't been seen in the track in two, three, four, five years and are fast. That's well. They're they're they're, they're not even they're not even doing anything to them besides washing them out. They still have the freaking <clears throat> leaves and, and those uh, the sticks and and whatever the needles from the trees still in them and duct tape numbers. Oh, that's all. That, <laughs> that's the <laughs> best. That right there. That because that makes yeah. you fast. So he was the top qualifier. Okay, he qualified with a seventeen one two nine. Second fast qualifier of the night. David Crump. Crump. David Crump. Brian's that's dad. Funny. Okay, seventeen six one four. We had one, two, three, four. The top five cars were on the seventeen second bracket. Okay. Um, now, this is this is gonna this is funny. Okay, trophy dash was Kevin Roberts, Chris Sign, David Kronk, and Kyle Yak. Okay, that was the finishing order. Kevin Roberts, Chris Sign, David Kronk, first time in the car, mid season championship, his birthday goes out, and he finishes, you know, in the top four. And qualifying second fast finishes third in the, in the dash ahead of Kyle Yak, um, but Robert wins this thing. Kevin Roberts won it, and he won it by one point nine nine four seconds. What? Kevin and four laps. Kevin dropped the hammer and says, "Hey, I'm gone. You guys what? race for second. Watch this. It's 88 fast. No way. Yeah, hammered down. I mean, he was he he put the power on the ground. I'll tell you that <laughs> right now. Now, heat race number two. 
That's in, that's insane. Heat race number two, we had uh, Rick Chambers in the number 12, got a win, okay, over Charlie Culpepper, Steve.